Hello, good morning and welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells at the Hanover Messe 2012. This is our 18th edition and right now I'm going to be talking to Freudenberg Fuel Cell Component Technologies. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Klaus Leister, the sales manager. Hi. Hi. Welcome. The, the topic we're talking about today is the release of your new high-class fuel cell filters. But of course, Freudenberg also specializes in many other components of fuel cells. So maybe before we start on the topic, you can tell us um, about all the other components that you have brought with you to the Hamessa this year and we can see at your booth. Okay, yes, Freudenberg. Um, basically, Freudenberg produces um, GDL material, um, gaskets for stack, stack gaskets and um, balance of plant components like um, humidifier and filters. So uh, this year we have some um, very new products, but also some exciting information. So yes, um, I think um, I would like to talk about that, yes. <laughs> yeah, what are some of the new products then that yeah. you have brought? Okay, so on the balance of plant components, we have um, our new uh, filter media. So Freudenberg is uh, actually a producer um, it's a six uh, billion euro company, it's a family owned, and uh, one of our um, yeah, key uh, competences is non-woven. So we produce our own um, non-woven products, that means uh, the GDL material, but also filter media. And um, so that means um, we have developed a new filter media with a significant increase um, of uh, capacity, yeah, a significant increase of performance. and. This is something what we show to today on the, on the show. Yes, yeah. because a filter, um, it seems like out of all the components um, of a fuel cell, the filter seems the most um, easy to understand for people. But what makes the, the filter for a fuel cell so complicated and complex? Okay, a filter seems to be a very simple product, yes. But um, I think um, it's, it's, it, it is simple, it should be filter uh, uh, at the air and should um, make a clean air. So the, qu the, the topic is that you have a lot of con um, contaminants, yes, so which are um, harmful for the fuel cell, for example, sulfur products or also some things what you think uh, it doesn't make, uh, let's say, a problem like um, ammonia. Yeah? So, and these components um, and these contaminants, um, they lead to uh, um, degradation of the fuel cell. So you need to filter that out. Yeah? So besides um, particles, contaminants, so this is uh, um, the, 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 the thing what a filter should do, yes. And you have a new high class filter. So what yeah. does it, the high class um, mean? So when we started, we, um, we made a filter media uh, which has a protection against uh, sulfur, um, hydrocarbons and um, ammonia and we thought that this filter should uh, meet the lifetime requirements of our customers and um, but what we found out is that um, the filter did not last that long as it's supposed to be yeah so um, now then we developed a new filter meter which now has a uh, more than four times higher capacity for all the major um, components so that means that this uh, meets the requirements, yeah? so lifetime requirements, but also cost what, requirements. Yeah? So what, what are the average uh, lifetime requirements? So basically it depends on, on how much air the filter should filter it. Yeah? So for example, um, in stationary applications, the uh, customer would like to have a two years lifetime, yeah? two years maintenance frequency, and that's something what the new filter um, achieve. Yeah? And that would be, it would run two years without having to change the filter or clean the filter? No, that's... Um, the filter is a, is a, uh, it's a chemical filtration, so after two years of operation, it has to be replaced. Yeah. Yeah. And is that a, a costly thing to do? It's a, no, it should not be costly. Yeah. So I think the filter should be um, efficient, but it should not be expensive. Yeah. And, and you have a product now that isn't neither? Yes, I think that um, this product now meets um, the, let's say, the performance requirements, but it also meets uh, the cost targets. And, and the lifetime of the filter, does that have an impact on the lifetime uh, of the fuel cell itself? So, yes, we, um, we made some uh, um, tests, uh, single cell tests, uh, to see what is the influence of uh, contamination on, on, on the lifetime 
of, uh, of the cell and we see a significant influence on, on contaminants on the lifetime. So that means when you put a filter in, you could uh, significantly increase uh, the lifetime, yeah? depending on the contamination level, of course. Yeah. Yeah, and and, the, and these filters they are for for every type of uh, fuel cells. For yes, it doesn't matter. Um, so basically, we make filters for uh, PEM fuel cell, hot PEM fuel cell, but also SFC um, applications. And are they readily available now? Are you uh, commercially selling um, your filters? Yes. So we sell filters, and um, the new one um, I think will be released uh, soon. So I think it's um, within the next. Um, one or two months, it will be uh, commercially available. Okay, fantastic. And you're ready for mass production? Yes, we are ready for mass production. And I think that um, one important topic is also, for example, uh, looking to the GDL, that we invested in a several um, yeah, million euro uh, finishing line, so um, which um, to be, yes, to be ready for mass production and also to meet the quality requirements for the automotive and non-automotive industry. Okay, so you have two very, um, well, the automotive industry is a, a key target group for you? And yes, yes. I think that um, when, you look to, when you look to the mass production, um, the automotive will play a significant role, yes. Okay, and has the mass production, will that have an impact on the, on the cost of the, of the filter? Or? Well, of course. I mean, you need a certain volume to produce efficient, and uh, that means that... Um, um, this will also um, bring the cost down, but I think that um, it's also important to be cost efficient at a smaller volume. I think that uh, that will help to um, to get the cost down for uh, for our customers. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience at this time? No, don't be shy. <laughs> Raise your hand at any time if you if you do have a have a question. Um, so you're releasing these, these filters soon, and um, what about your other, uh, do you want to show the filter yes. actually, because you brought yes. it along actually, with you? Yeah, I think that um, what is important, so we have increased not only the, the, the chemical um, capacity, we also increased the efficiency against the particulate um, filtration. So we have a new um, salt aerosol filter, but it uh, filters uh, more than 98% on, on all particle rates. So that means that's really efficient. But the, the most important thing is also that it has a very low pressure drop. Yeah? So that means that um, high efficient and low pressure drop, that's something what is really, really new and uh, what's really interesting. And does that differentiate you from, from other um, filter producers? Yes, I think so. I don't think that someone else has something um, available um, like this. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Um, and. Uh, we want to go back to some of the other products that yeah. you have uh, showing at your at your yeah. booth this week. Okay, what have so you brought there? We have, um, besides uh, clean air, we also um, think about conditioning air. So that means we uh, produce a um, humidifier, hollow fiber humidifier. So we have now um, a new product line, uh, which is very flexible. Yeah, so we can change the lengths, we can change the fiber diameter. We can change the, uh, let's say, um, the port configuration without a significant increase of cost because this is a, what we say a modular concept and um, I think this is also yeah, important. Is this again for all types of fuel cells and all applications? Basically the, the humidification is needed if you um, would like to have higher, higher lifetime or if you would like to have a um, higher power out, um, outcome. Yeah? So um, this product is designed for, uh, for small applications, so between, uh, let's would say, one and five kilowatt. Yeah? But uh, we also work uh, on humidifiers for um, automotive applications. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And um, your general impressions of the, of the exhibit this year, um, who are you looking to meet uh, this yeah. week? Are you impressed with the progress of the hydrogen fuel cell industry? Well, what I think is that um, we had, um, I was very busy, yeah? so um, I think that uh, we had very good contacts. Um, I think that um, in general there is um, less uh, people over there, but I think the contacts are more of more high quality, I would, would say. Yeah. Okay, and, and you're optimistic, are we reaching the commercialization of these technologies? Y your products obviously will also help. And yes. 
So I think that um, we had a lot of uh, also um, yeah, contacts with our sealing material for the um, for the stack seal. So we have a um, a new material um, which is um, let's say um, flexible, yeah, without tooling invest. So um, it has also um, low cost. That means that um, uh, people um, are very interested in using that also for uh, let's say. Yeah, immediate, um, let's say, um, numbers of, 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 of systems, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Oh, we have a question. Uh, come over to you. Um, one question to the humidifier. I guess it's um, a membrane humidifier? Yes, it's, um, um, it's a hollow fiber membrane humidifier. And it's of Bathion, I think. No, or? no, yeah. no. So which it's material a, do you use? Yeah, that's a, um, that's a, the, it's a porous structured um, hollow fiber, yeah, with, uh, which the, the working principle is uh, capillary condensation. So in comparison to, uh, to Nephion, it's, um, Nephion is, works on diffusion, and this capillary condensation is, um, has a higher water transfer rate, especially at higher flow rates. Yes. Okay, um, I guess it's um, cheaper than Nafion or yes, so I mean you have um, you don't have that um, material cost topic, yeah. So when you have higher production volumes, yeah. thank you very much. Uh, do you have any more questions from the audience? No, do you have any last thoughts or advice or oh, that's points of interest <laughs> to mention? Because um, we are yeah. Then I want to thank you very much for joining us today. Um, if you have any more um, questions or you want to continue the conversation, you can um, go and join um, Freudenberg at booth number C75, okay. They're just behind here. I wish you all the best for the rest of the week at the Messe and um, with your products. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, in a couple of moments we will be joining um, ACTA, they're going to be talking about hydrogen fuel systems powered by renewable power sources, talking to the CEO, Paolo Bert. Thank you.